a very good evening to you all, and welcome back to the Bon Bon Baking Bonanza, the world's only musical baking show where the host passive-aggressively makes the recipes that you tell him to. Today, we are going to be making a suggestion from friend of the gram and longtime friend of me in general, uh, Kendra Siddiqui. She suggested that we make Swedish cardamom buns, and I thought, you know, Sweden seems like a really cool place. Um, I don't remember my geography too well, but I'm pretty sure that was like somewhere in Germany, right? Um, yeah, I've, I've always wanted to see the canals, but anyway, um, I thought this would be a great way to experience a little bit of that culture and, um, you know, just really, uh, really get inspired. So thanks for the suggestion, Kendra, and uh, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we've got to do here is warm up a half a cup of milk. We're supposed to get it to start bubbling, and then once it's bubbling, then we take it off the stove and let it cool back down. And now we wait. While we're waiting for that to boil, I thought I'd mention, um, I've never had cardamom before. In fact, I didn't even know it existed before Kendra mentioned it. Uh, so let's, let's like smell some cardamom, maybe take a little taste and see what the cardamom is all about. All right, so I've got the container open now. Um, let's take a smell. I can't decide if I like that or not. It smells kind of like soap. Let's see how it tastes. Interesting. All right, so it's boiling. Um, I took it off so that it could rest a little bit before we apply the yeast. All right, and while we are waiting on that milk to cool and also before we put the yeast in it, let's go ahead and get the uh, one and a half cups of uh, the flour that we need. All right, so we've got one and a half cups of flour, so we need to add our salt to that. And then over here, we'll mix up some more ingredients, but let's let's start with this for now. So it says that next we're going to need a eighth of a teaspoon of salt, which is, I don't have any measuring utensils that small, so we'll just do a quarter teaspoon. It's as I said to my friend Haley the other day, baking is not a science, it's an art. So if I want to put in a quarter teaspoon, I absolutely can, and there's nothing that anybody can do about it. Yeah, the microphones were too much work. I'll figure out how to do that later. I'm just gonna use my phone for now. Um, so active dry yeast. Yeah, we're gonna need one teaspoon of active dry yeast. Some wild yeast under the red bread tree. So let's do this. One teaspoon of yeast. We're going to sprinkle this across the milk and let it, uh, let it do its thing. So we've got two tablespoons of light brown sugar, two tablespoons of butter, and now we're going to get half a teaspoon of cardamom. Uh, open that up. I had to go to three different grocery stores to find this. So you guys better appreciate my dedication to the cardamom. And you also better appreciate my dedication to your mom. All right, so they didn't really specify how to mix this together. So I'm just using a fork. <laughs> it also says to mix the uh, the milk yeast, the the yeast, the 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 yolk. Yes, we need to mix the yolk into this. That'll probably make it easier. The yolk. There we go. Now let's mix it up a little better. Oh yeah. Look at this great just mixture. It's very appetizing, isn't it? I am an amazing chef. Michelin star. Actually, no, I'm I'm Firestone star. It's a little bit better. Um, not many people have heard of Firestone star, so I'm really not sure if I'm doing this right. All right, I've made an executive decision that I'm supposed to be whisking this. So I'm going to whisk this together now and see if that helps at all. It just seems like the butter and everything is like coagulating, so I'm not really sure what exactly. Let's 
smells weirdly reminiscent of like a Moscow mule? I don't, what? <laughs> yeah, I think that's about as mixed as that's gonna get. So we're supposed to gradually add some flour to it, so. Let's add a little bit of flour. Oh yeah, I bet you've never seen cooking moves like this before. Oh, look at that. I'm like the Harlem Globetrotters of cooking. Man, look at just, wow. That is a sick move right there. And uh, you guys better watch out because I'm, I'm unstoppable. Oh no. Let my whisk go. Really goes to show you that uh, I don't actually know what it goes to show you, but it goes to show you something, I'm sure. This doesn't feel right, but it's what I'm doing. This feels so wrong. <laughs> Let's do it by hand. We're probably about into the kneading stage, to be honest. Oh yeah, Sweden's where Minecraft came from, right? Okay. Man, all this kneading. It's making me think about how your mom needed me last night. I bet you guys have never just seen superior kneading skills like this. This consistency feels odd. Don't worry, my counters are clean. This does not look right. I feel like it needs a little bit more milk, to be honest with you. Like, just... The slightest amount. Oh no. <laughs> that might have been the wrong decision. <laughs> wow, this is uh this is really not going as well as the bread did. You will not win against me yet. Alright. That'll be good enough for now. So we need to lightly grease a bowl and put that in it to let it rise. All right, we've got our lightly greased and clean bowl here. So we will just, oh man, plop that guy in there and uh, hope that it rises into something more palatable than that. <laughs> So I gotta admit, we're midway through the rise here, and um, man, this is reminding me a lot of one of my first restaurant jobs where uh, I was working in this kind of mid-high-level Asian fusion restaurant, and um, uh, one of the first days I was working there, you know, the manager was like, wow, Jonathan, you're killing it. And I was like, thanks, manager. Um, but then a couple days later, I was working again, and he, he said, wow, Jonathan, you're really not killing it today. And um, I feel like I'm really not killing it today, which is a shame um, because really ever since that moment, I have strived every single day to kill it, um, to kill everything. You know, I just, I just wanna like wrap my hands around its throat and watch the life slowly drain from its eyes. Um, you know, I just, I, I want to murder everything that I do. Uh, and this, I just feel like I'm not killing it. The Bon Bon Baking Bonanza will return after these short messages. Do you want to wear a cardigan but can't because of your mom? Introducing Cardamom. Now you can wear cardigans anywhere you want. Church, shopping, working, eating, sleeping, and repeating the same cycle over and over again until you're dead, with no hope of ever escaping. Cardamom, make America card again again. All right, it's been 40 minutes, so now let's mix together the filling. We will need three tablespoons of brown sugar mixed into three tablespoons 
of butter, which we have melted here. Two, three, and then we need some of the cardamom. Uh, one teaspoon, one teaspoon of cardamom. So that's this size of this spice. We are actually about to be in a part that you're probably gonna wanna be up close and personal for, so I figured I would go ahead and do this. <laughs> that was probably not smart. Um, dang, this is not convenient at all. That's a technique I learned in France. It's pretty high level, pretty advanced, advanced France. Advanced France cooking school. That's what it was called, yep. His name was France. He was a good man. Oh yeah, that looks very appetizing, doesn't it? I know, you're just drooling over this right now and uh, I don't blame you. It looks delicious, I mean. All right, so now we need to roll this into a long rectangle, which I just realized might be a problem because I don't have a roller. We're gonna use this to roll the, the bread. Okay, okay, all right. It smells pretty good, doesn't feel so bad now. That's, uh, that's promising. <laughs> we might actually, there might actually be hope here yet. Suddenly, I feel like doing this with glass might not be the best idea. Well, I guess it's porcelain, but still, something just feels weird about it. Interesting. It says it needs to be roughly 21 by 7, so I thought we could uh, make sure here. Um, no, probably not wide enough. Um, what about this way? Ooh, not even close. Oh, man. Uh, I'm not sure if these portions are right. 15? Oh, come on. Okay, at least it's 7 around the, the edge, though. It's a step in the right direction. That's probably as good as it's gonna get if I'm telling you guys the truth. Uh, <laughs> and now we add the filling and spread it evenly, so... Put it all across like that. Just wow. The result is supposed to be roughly square. Uh, that is roughly square, sort of. You know, it had me for a second, but I'm starting to think that this is not going to go well again. <laughs> so if I'm reading this correctly, I think we're supposed to split this into six even uh, things. So I'd be like, what, five cuts? Um, so we'll need one in the middle. Something like that. You know, I'm gonna be honest, I am reading the instructions as text, so they make absolutely no sense to me. Apparently I'm supposed to twist them while tucking the side of one under. <laughs> oh, lie in a pool of your blood. <laughs> You know what, I'm gonna make this work in whatever weird convoluted way I have to. I might be inventing a new pastry here today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, stay tuned. Oh man, <laughs> I have murder on my hands. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, just, this is artwork, guys, just, artwork. I mean, the twist is just nothing like it. Man, do you ever just forget to make your mom jokes the entire time while you have a golden ingredient like cardamom? Because it do be like that sometimes. And then we're gonna place our twists onto the sheet.
Look, it's a it's a scale. It goes from uh, small to large. <laughs> okay, so now I need to cover these and let them prove for another 30 minutes. And meanwhile, I'm supposed to heat up the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, or if I was not mistaken, about 220 um, Celsius. Let me double check. Yes, that was 220 Celsius. Um, so yeah, now we wait again. All right, now we make the egg wash. One egg and one teaspoon of sugar. All right, and now we are supposed to lightly bathe these cardamom buns with the delectable egg wash we just created. So I don't have a brush. So we're gonna do this in the most creative way that I can think. Oh, oh, oh my, oh my. There we go. Yep. This is the way it's meant to be made. I am killing it. Very nice. I think in order to avoid any awkwardness with all the egg on the thing here, I'm actually going to put a piece of foil on there and then put the cardamoms on top of it. Much better. Now we sprinkle a little more sugar on there. There we go. Now we bake them for 12 minutes. Let's see how this turns out. All right, y'all, it's the moment of truth. Let's see how this turned out. You know what? Not bad. Not bad. Look at these. I mean, I thought this was gonna be a total travesty, but they look all right, you know? Like, they are not the worst. Might be kind of hard to get off the, the pan here, but not bad. Not bad. All right, y'all, after all this hard work, it's finally the moment of truth. Are the cardamom buns good? Which, by the way, it looks all right. At least this one. It is pretty good, not gonna lie, pretty good. Also, I thought it would be fun to show you guys the interior of it because it's a bit butterier and eggier of a uh, bread than what we made the other day. Um, you know, it's a lot thicker, but it's very, it's very good. It's very good. This has been the Bon Bon Baking Bonanza. Thank you for joining me. And uh, I'll see you next time. Please leave a recommendation in the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where this goes.